On this video, I'd like to talk about trig identities. And before I do that, let's review trig functions in terms of x, y, and r. Sine theta is y over r, and cosine theta is x over r, and so forth. Uh, these two, sine theta and cosine theta, are reciprocals, meaning that sine theta will be 1 over cosecant theta. And we'll look more in details uh, later. And cosine theta and secant theta are reciprocals. And tangent theta and cotangent theta are reciprocals. Let's take a look at reciprocal identities and quotient identities. So sine theta is 1 over cosecant theta, and cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta, and so forth. So we have reciprocal identities, and we have a quotient identities. Tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta, and cotangent theta is cosine theta over sine theta. I want to show you why sine theta is 1 over cosine theta. Well, you know that cosecant theta is r over y. And what is 1 divided by r over y? That same thing as 1 times y over r, which is y over r. So, you get this. You get that definition of sine theta, which is y over r. That's why sine theta is 1 over cosine theta. What about tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta? What is sine theta? That's y over r. What about cosine theta? x over r. So what, is, what happens when you divide? That becomes y over r times r over x. r cancels out. You get y over x, and that is the tangent theta. That's why tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. You could use this method to prove other identities. Let's take a look at some examples. So if secant x equals 5 over 3, find cosine x. Well, you know that cosine x is 1 over secant x, because they are reciprocals. And what is secant x? It's, it says it's 5 over 3. So it will be 1 over 5 over 3, which will be 1 times the reciprocal, 3 over 5, which is 3 over 5. So that will be cosine of x. On this example, we have cosecant beta is 25 over 7. Secant beta is 25 over 24, and we have to find tangent beta. Well, you know that tangent beta is sine beta over cosine beta. Now, sine beta is 1 over cosecant beta. From given information, cosecant beta is 25 over 7. So sine beta will be 1 over 25 over 7, which is going to be 7 over 25. What about cosine of beta? That's 1 over secant beta, which will be 1 over 25 over 24, which is 24 over 25. So what is our tangent beta? Sine beta, which is 7 over 25, divided by 24 over 25, which is 7 over 25 times 25 over 24. 25 cancels out. As a result, you get 7 over 24. And that is our tangent beta. Let's take a look at a more uh, complicated example. So we have cotangent theta equals negative 3, 
and cosine theta is less than zero. We've got to find cosecant theta and tangent theta. These two information right here will give us which where the theta lies in which quadrant. So if you recall, which quadrant was uh, cosine theta negative? Well, that's ha that happens when uh, theta is in second quadrant and the uh, fourth quadrant. What about cosine theta? When is cosine theta less than zero? That happens second quadrant and third quadrant. Well, this is a quadrant where they overlap. So we know that theta has to be in the second quadrant. And the other thing that we have to remember is it says cotangent theta is negative 3. Well, there's two possibilities. Whether it could be negative 3 if the top number is negative and the bottom number is positive, or if the top number is positive and bottom number is negative. In second quadrant, x has to be negative. And what is the definition of cotangent theta? It's x over y, meaning that x is negative 1 and y has to be positive 3, since theta is in second qua uh, quadrant. So, how do you find cosine theta and tangent theta. Well, we, we have x, which is negative 1, and we know y is 3, but what is r? If we have that information, then we could find the answer right away. Using Pythagorean theorem, r squared equals x squared plus y squared, you know that r squared will be negative 1, quantity negative 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is 1 plus 9. Therefore, it's going to be 10. R is positive, negative, radical 10. However, R is always positive. Therefore, R has to be radical 10. So we know that R is radical 10. So what is cosecant theta? Well, cosecant theta is r over y, which is radical 10 over 3. What about tangent theta? Tangent theta is y over x, which is 3 over negative 1, which is going to be negative 3. On this example, it says sine x is 1 over 6 and cosine x is positive. So which quadrant are they both positive? Uh, both sine x and cosine x is positive only in the first quadrant. So this is a theta right here. And what is the definition of sine x? Sine x is y over r. So in this case, y, y will be 1 and r is 6. So how do you find the x value? Again, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem, which is 6 squared equals x squared plus 1 squared, which means that x squared will be 35. So x is positive, negative, radical 35. But since the quadrant, we're talking about first quadrant, x has to be radical, positive, radical 35, and y is 1 and r is 6. So having this information right here, that will help us to find cotangent x and secant x. What is cotangent x? The definition of cotangent x is x over y, which is radical 35, over 1, which is radical 35. What about secant x? Secant x is r over x, which will be 6 over radical 35. And you want to simplify the radical on the bottom. It's 6 radical 35 over 
35.